Hey guys, this is James from Forex Alchemist here, and I'm here to bring you uh, another of our expert guides for the first 30 turns of Endless Space 2. This time I'm going to be taking the Unfallen, the newest uh, addition to Endless Space 2 that was added just before the game went into release mode, and talking about um, how to play them in the early game. I didn't go through it here, but we're using the normal settings, endless difficulty, hard minor civilizations, um, 10 competitors, and uh, all the victory conditions except economy victory turned on, which is how we normally play the game. <clears throat> all right, so ooh, we've got kind of an interesting start here. It's kind of a uh, not so good start for Unfallen, actually. So. <clears throat> Let's just take a quick look. So this is a dust nebula here. And let's go ahead and zoom in. So actually, before we zoom in, let's just talk briefly about the Unfallen. <clears throat> so the Unfallen don't have a um, an influence circle <clears throat> the way that other races do. Excuse me, I've got something in my throat. <coughs> Better. Sorry. So, the Unfallen don't have an influence circle the way that other races do. Instead, they have these vines, and you have to use these guys, vine ships, to connect the vines from um, an existing vined system to a new system. And you can do it across star lanes, like just sending them down this way for any distance, or you can do it outside of star lanes for a given radius. As you can see, this guy, it's got this kind of green glowing thing that comes up here um, when you hover over it, or when you when I hover over my vine ship, or it just like boops once in a while, and uh, yeah, and that lets me know it's an option there. So, if we look into the, our system here, we've got a forest as our starting system, and we've got this special guy here, it's called a guardian. Um, that gives global happiness and extra damage done to uh, attackers during ground battle. This is the one of the reasons that Unfallen are incredibly, incredibly strong. And by the way, I should preface this video by saying I think Unfallen are the strongest faction, with the exception of Vodiani, um, with the right start. <clears throat> so here are the Unfallen population. On fertile planets, they have huge advantages, plus five food uh, on fertile for a plus seven overall. And they start on fertile, uh, this forest here, which means that their initial um, food production is intense at 73, unbelievably strong. Also, the way that they settle new planets with their vine ships by entangling other systems doesn't draw any food, so they rapidly grow in population. So. You may have seen here that there is this thing here called a guardian. So w water planets, including toxics actually, so forests, terrans, and so on, have these guardian curiosities that the uh, the unfallen can see, which creates a second one of these populations here. So as unfallen, you actually usually start if you spend the curiosity to get this guardian with four population, which is just massive. And let's just do a little check as well. I'm not sure. I think the Guardians do consume food, so we're at minus 12.4 right now. And we'll check again when we um, <clears throat> when we boop that curiosity. So then this is our hero. He's a seeker pacifist, <clears throat> which means he can get this blue sky speculator for extra science early on. The unfallen abilities of giving extra fleet health and extra food percentages aren't super strong and then of course this seeker ability is uh, excellent in the late game when you're flying uh, ships off off the star lanes off piste as I like to say so <clears throat> what I usually like to do with this guy is he gives a little extra dust early on but whoop de doo is assign him to the fleet um, and so we're gonna assign him to our questioner and use him for exploring curiosities. So we want to get the Guardian for sure. And 
All right, so we're at 12.4 before. Now we've got two guardians here, you see, and still 12.4. So the guardians don't even consume food. They're just there, locked in, and they do pursue, they do produce all of the normal fids of working the planet. Um, exploring this guardian, however, doesn't do us any good because it doesn't move planets. We need to be able to colonize toxic planets first in order to uh, benefit from this guardian. Although we can explore it earlier, uh, it just won't give us any benefits. So as my second thing that I want to explore, ooh, this is kind of nice over here, blue cap mold and mineral rich on this snow planet. Uh, I'm going to check out these guys, the savanna ones. Although, let's be real, I'm going to try to get all of them. And let's actually check it out. So we don't have access to the curiosity one yet. Um, we're going to definitely start out with xenolinguistics, as we often do, and then go to public-private partnerships. So, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, if you haven't watched the other guides, xenolinguistics we do first because you get this huge industry bonus on fertile planet temperates, um, and that's all three of them for our forest, so that's plus 30 industry, and then same building here for science with xenobiology, plus 30 science, uh, magnified with every other planet we control, and we'll have the savanna as our next one, which will be plus 20 of each of those automatically as soon as we colonize it, and plus 10 for the snow when we get that one, and plus 20 for the toxic, because it's also a temperate. Okay, so next thing we want to do here is <coughs> to take our questioner, who's got... Um, yeah, he's got probe right now. So there's two utility slots, two defense slots, and one offense slot <coughs> on the unfallen scout ship. And so if we wanted to reset this guy, we could just go like so and reset it to two probes for 30. And this is what I've been doing more and more, especially in a start like this that has, um, let's see if we can, I don't think, oh, that's still only 30. Okay, cool. So yeah, we'll give them a little bit of this. Uh, I've been doing this more and more because, um, you know, if you look down here, we have quite a ways to go and reducing his speed to four is not really where we want to be. Keeping it up at six is a little bit better. And so here, our hero's ship starts with a ton of uh, a ton of stuff, and so I want to add in some probes there as well and pull off one gun, and now he's okay. We'll upgrade his ship as well, and so now each of these guys will have two probes and they'll have overall six movement speed, and we can go. and get all these other things. Okay, so micro factories. It's a nice one. Influence as well. More blue cap mold on that savanna probably. Metallic waters. Not bad. The guardian on the toxic. And our hero has already leveled up. We're gonna give him blue sky speculator so that he can return at level three to his homeland. All right. Now, what do we do with our vine ship? So looking quickly at our vine ship, he's also got some defense modules. This is the vining module. And then this guy is the, uh, this guy is just his engine. And so he needs to hover over a place and then he can start attaching vines to it. And it takes 10 turns to entwine a system. So normally, we would try to scout out or see one one or the other, but we can entwine any system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna have them explore down this way. And then I'm gonna send these guys down the other direction, unless he finds something very incredible next turn. We also start as a democracy, so we get two laws as opposed to most other races that get only one. You can see we're already loyal with a 74% because we have two guardians. And so what I'm going to do is install 
first of all, um, well, let's see. Yeah, it should work because we have four four populations. So Super Tax Act, which reduces us to seventy, but then Toys for Boys, which pumps us up to ninety for Devoted, and this means we're getting now a bonus to our industry, which by the way we start with plus 29 industry because the guardians give a huge amount of industry, 20 or 10 from each of them. So you have much higher than a, uh, any of the other civilizations, even like Empire can't compete at all with this. Um, you get a very nice dust bonus because you start, it was devoted with a uh, super tax act enacted right away and an extra population compared to all the other races. And so you're in, we're in a pretty, um, it's a pretty good situation to start in. The only thing we're kind of missing out in the early game is science. We don't have huge science, but we're gonna fix that as quickly as possible. Now the next question is, what do we start building? And the answer to that is, you want to start building vine ships, but we don't want uh, vine ships that cost too much. We want to start with lower amounts. And so what I like to do actually is build these vine ships that have, no, well, I'm even gonna get a better engine. So I'm just gonna build this vine ship that has 200 industry and call it vine ship two, just a blank slot. Because the more of these guys that we can get, the better. And actually, you know what? With the two guardians here, I should calculate should have calculated this a little bit better, but it kind of gives you a, a bit of look into the thought process that I use and how to optimize these early turns. See Xenolinguistics here will take six. This vine ship will take five. I could get a couple of turns of extra um, stuff, like one turn extra of cerebral reality or something, but I would like actually to finish the vine ship the same turn that I um, finish xenolinguistics. So what I can do here actually is I'll just add a little bit of extra stuff to it. And I can even put like these two uh, defense modules back in because I'm gonna kill those things. And now it's a six turn, see? Because I'm gonna kill those things and not uh, kind of undo them and put in a, the vine ship module, the vining module, but it'll cost less dust. Um, if I put them in now. So, with my vine ship in queue, and the reason, yeah, we'll get to the reason that we want to do a vine ship in a second, I'll talk about it as the turn is ending. Um, so yeah, we've got our two laws, our science is picked out, xenolinguistics, we've done some ship modifications for both, for all three of our ships, and assigned our hero, and now we go to the next turn. So, as I mentioned before, the vine ships take 10 turns. Hello? No, you're not the optimal place. So the vine ships take 10 turns to entwine a system. And so like to overcome a minor sieve like this guy, you actually have to entwine it first. Um, all right, so we're gonna send him this way. We're gonna send these guys this way um, and so but you can stack the vine ships so if you have two vine ships instead of taking 10 turns to entwine it only takes five and that's a whole lot better um, so if you can run around with two vine ships entwining a new out like basically you make a new outpost automatically colonizing a planet every five turns by having two vine ships. It's incredibly fast. You can expand as the Unfallen even faster than the Riftborn or the Lumeris. One more reason that they're incredibly good. Also notice that this is turn two. We have 85 influence already. That's kind of thanks to the, uh, thanks to the uh, 50 that we got from our, our booping, our, our curiosity. Um, these guys give a natural plus one, but we can still afford to do two praisings with them. And now we'll gain a total of 45 over the next 10 turns at five a turn, which means on turn six, we'll already be getting 
uh, dust and science from this minor sieve using exactly all of our influence. All right, other than that, nothing special to do here. Notice that we're gaining a lot of dust every turn. All right, and little thing here, when I, instead of deciding to just say, move all your fleets, when you discover new nodes, you actually get experience. So I'm gonna move my hero first. No, oh, well, this is kind of lame that there's not a, um, a system here, but that's okay. It's another nebula. The Unfallen use the nebulas really well. Um, so he just got some extra experience anyway, is what I was saying, by moving him first to make sure he was the one discovering this system. And we're gonna keep shuttling him forward. So the Unfallen, they have to move in a in a progression, so there's no purpose for me sending this vine ship, for example, past here to follow my hero. I need to vine this one, this thing. But luckily, um, when you vine a uh, nebula like this, whatever these nodes are, like these nebular clouds, you get the influence automatically on your nearest colony, or your nearest system. So even though for a normal race, <clears throat> it would take probably 40 plus, 40, 50 turns, I mean, even more, to get out to um, engulf something like this, the Unfallen can get it pretty much right away. So we're gonna start doing that next turn. All right, turn four, we already gained our first person, thanks to our massive food. We're at 115 surplus food a turn. Which, uh, which means we're gaining a new population every three. So pretty strong. I'm going to move both of our fleets forward. Okay, we found our first system here. It's got a Mediterranean, a forest, <laughs> and a tundra, a fantastic system, five new curiosities. We're going to get to that one as soon as possible, but in order to do that, we first will need to entwine this system. All right, three more turns there. Oh, with our new population, aha, check this out. With our new population, we actually are producing enough science that we would get there in five turns. So, yeah, I probably should have planned for that better. That's that's why I haven't done that thing before. Ah, okay, should have made a note of it. So you, you can, the perfectly to tact then, to like finish the vine ship and xenolinguistics at the same time, you make a completely empty vine ship. All right, now for our, object our objective. This is one the unfallen race will, um, or the unfallen faction, it'll go back to you know, a neutral state after this. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick. Um, getting two anomalies is sometimes easy, sometimes hard. Like here, micro, micro factories and mineral rich means that I just have to colonize these two things in my home place, um, these two tier two planets. And then, well, let's actually check here if these Mediterraneans or tundras or the forests here. will also give us something. So we've got the blue cap, the titan oh, titanium, and our guardian. And then team spirit, okay. So probably the easiest thing for us to do here, and the one that I normally pick for the quest, um, the one I would normally pick for the quest is the star systems because it's more consistent, but the reward that you get, like 60 super spuds, which you just sell on the market versus a random technology, possessing the anomalies is much better if you can pull it off. So given that we started off with two nice anomalies that we want to get on the two planets we want to expand to, I'm actually going to go ahead and take no in this situation, but both of them I think are fully um, yeah, fully doable. All right, now we're gonna pump up our science a little bit more. 
So, this guy is sitting happy over here. He's going to probably wait a couple of turns, maybe a bit of in and out. And this guy is trucking away at this. We're finishing Xenolinguistics next turn. We're also gaining so much dust. By the way, the reason that we can do this is that we know we're going to have enough dust just from our natural generation to upgrade our vine ship afterwards, even though the vine ship module is quite expensive. So we can now exploit titanium. We're getting tundra colonization. Check, check. All right, so now it's another turn until we get more probes here. So probably what I'm going to do is instead of waiting for more probes, I think I'm just going to go exploring. Let's see what we can find. All right, um, nothing else to do this turn. We have a lot of dust building up. It comes so quickly and a lot of influence here. So this is actually something we can talk about. So six turns of praising left. Um, I actually should have done this, I guess, a turn ago, um, the moment I had 85, because I mentioned before that plus five for 10 turns, which is what I had before, will give 45, because it actually only counts at nine times, even though it says 10 turns. Um, so I need to do one more praising to get them up to 50. And the earlier I do it, the earlier I'll get them to 50, which will, is, is when they'll really start giving us a lot. So it's totally worth it for me to spend my influence right now to get them to um, get them past 50. Even though it's more expensive from, from an influence perspective, we just have so much influence, more than we can use at this juncture. Okay, and now we're gonna finish our vine ship. We leave the back end open. It actually doesn't really matter, um, but okay, cool. They're providing us with resources, so we can look at them. Eight science, 10 dust, 50 manpower. Um, and we've got Xeno Industrials next, which we'll finish in six turns. We got another population as well, because we get one population every three. So these guys, this place is almost full. Um, and then before we send out our vine ship, we have to upgrade it, because we can only upgrade it in places that we control. So here, and then you see it was 154, but when you, we reduce it to one, uh, we pull away those things. Now it's only 123. Apply the design, upgrade our vine ship, and oh, one more thing that is really nice is that you can see how the the black dots are spaced out about twice the distance of normal. So if I were to move down here, it would take me two turns to go that distance. And you see the black dots that indicate one movement speed are pretty close together. If you move down paths that you're vining, you move at double speed. So I can make it here in one turn. And this guy who's currently spending seven more turns to vine that planet, I can now merge these fleets and now it's four turns. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, send this guy up this way. It looks like he's got a Mediterranean here as well as a desert and an arid. I'll just throw some of these things down here. A little dense atmosphere. So that's an easy anomaly to get from a Mediterranean. Um, and so after this, I'm gonna have the ability for this one minor civilization, since I'm producing so much influence, I'm actually gonna try to conquer them by influence, not by invasion. I haven't found that many other minor civs yet or other players, so I don't really need to prioritize early military technology right now, even though I could do that. Uh, instead, I'm gonna benefit the most from colonizing as many planets as I can. So I wanna get to the snow and the savanna in here. I wanna get to my forest, tundra, Mediterranean here, and the Mediterranean here as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna go for the Mediterranean next. We may reevaluate that in a second. I'll tell you why. But we're gonna start by looking at that. Okay, now here, we'll get some more probes next turn. 
it's turn seven, remember I can return my um, hero on turn nine to the planet, which will double my science because the hero gives plus 40. So we'll talk about doing that in a second. Okay. So I got another probe. And we use it. Ancient ruins and a little extra science. Hoorah. Okay. Should be three more turns here. Yep. So little by little, and then we'll move them over this way. Okay. Ending the turn. <laughs> A second Harashems. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so these guys are giving agricultural experts, and these guys are giving also agriculture experts. Sometimes different minor civs will have this uh, have different bonuses that they give, but whatever. Having a couple of temperate civilizations seems totally fine. Um, and we're going to want their science and dust bonuses, so we're going to praise them twice as well. Uh, and then it looks like they have a series of um, curiosities. They have six of them. Oh my goodness. So we're going to uh, yeah, use our hero to explore those curiosities as much as possible. I guess two of them to start with. Not so many. Okay. So with that, I have two more turns here. So it's three turns without um, with one ship. And so I'm going to do a little trick that you can do with the vine ships. Remember how you saw before, if the vines are already coming, the ship moves at double speed. So we want to, if we want to get this one at max production, then I want to start, start heading over here. And I can sacrifice one turn later of doing this and I'll get both ships here one turn earlier because yeah <clears throat> because this guy will be able to move from this node to this node at double speed and we'll have higher total uptime of our vining okay so we're gonna get xenobiology next turn we're just generating huge amounts of dust. So we are going from xenobiology here. Um, rare earth foams for colonizing Mediterraneans is next. Uh, Academy got discovered. We gained another population because we're gaining very fast. We have two left. Now we're at the point where we're, yeah, <laughs> gaining m better than um, one every three turns, which would be a hundred food, a hundred food. So we really need to colonize somewhere new. So at this stage, we need to decide if we want to go for eukaryotic sap, which we can get in three turns, which isn't bad, or baryonic shielding, which we can get in 173 plus, it'll be 207. Um, so I think that actually, before we get the rare earth foams, we're actually going to want eukaryotic sap so we can get our snow uh, planet. And then, as we discussed before, we're going to say like, okay, you're here. The Haroshems, we did our couple of flatterings already. Keeping them at five is good. And we'll just do two more. Um, signal is always prioritized and signal extra titanium and a pulsos population not bad not bad and we leveled up an extra time here which 
I think we're gonna take this guy for the extra food and industry right now. We'll just take that for one level. Um, actually, the 10%, yeah, the 10% is probably better. Make ourselves grow even faster. And then we're going to relocate and become a governor. So now our science jumps way up, our food jumps up even more, and we're going to be growing very fast indeed. Okay. So, but now with, <clears throat> with that increased strength there, we're going to get eukaryotic sap in three turns. And after our Xeno Industrial, we're immediately going to actually colonize the snow planet. So that means I don't actually want private partnerships right now, because I want the uh, remaining industry there to be uh, held in limbo. Oh, I'm an idiot. I have an extra two turns here, don't I? Ah, I did it. I did it a couple turns too early because I was excited to show you guys. But obviously, I can't start binding this thing until this one's finished. So, mistake there. I should have waited two turns. Or, sorry, I should have wasted waited one extra turn and used him on that one extra turn there and then departed him. Sorry my, about my math there, guys. All right, let's have you explore down this way. Not the end of the world. One turn delay. All right, and now you saw that. It's turn 11. We're up past 50 with these guys, which means they're giving 30 and 26. Um, we're going to wait until the praising from our initial group falls off a little bit before we do a couple more praises. But then we're just going to try to build them up to 75 as quickly as possible. Our science bumped up again a bunch, so we're at <laughs> we're at one turn. And look at this, it's turn 11. We've done nothing but get our own sieve and just like let it develop normally. And we're producing 97 dust a turn. We've got 120 science on turn 11. 33 influence, more than we know what to do with, basically. And we're about to get our first colony in a little bit, but not yet. All right, one more turn here, and then we can start, since I screwed that up. And it looks like I have another minor sieve down there, which is excellent. Okay, so now we've got our QR, our nebula. And we'll go back to rare earth foams there, and we'll start our vining. And now you see immediately when you start the vining, even before you do anything, you get that double move speed, which is why I wanted him to leave one turn earlier, not exactly when I left it. And then you do this, merge them together, and five turns, this will be done. So, great. So, QR is now part of our Vines network, which means that the benefits here, 10 industry, science, dust, and influence, go to Spica. You see how we jumped to 46 there. Um, yeah, we've also got extra influence and finished our snow colonization early. It takes, yeah, you know, a fair amount of influence here, but we can get it almost immediately, and then we're going to go for public-private partnerships right after it, because as you can see, in two turns, we're going to be at maximum population here, and we want the ability to keep growing. This is the life of the Unfallen. All right, the Epistus Minor Sieve is here. Oh, although we have a battle facing us, which we will not be able to win. Oh. We're going to retreat down an unknown, an unknown star lane. And these guys aren't our friends particularly, which is great, because it makes it easier for us to become friends with them. So we're going to do a quick 1-2 to get 36, and then evaluate here. These guys dropped off a little bit, right? So they're down to plus 3 uh, for another 4 turns. So three for four more turns means that we're gonna get another plus nine there. I almost wanna just jump up 
faster, but I think that actually we're going to be better off doing our 6 times 10, which is 6 times 9, which is going to be 54, because this will, these three um, praises will get us to over 50 with them in 10 turns as well. So let's just maximize our friendly, unfallen nature. Looking briefly at the score, we're not ahead of the endless AIs, but that actually may change quite quickly. Um, all right, and let's end the turn. So we don't need dust particularly. You see we have so much of it right here. We're getting stuff from our friends, the Harashems now. We do have to start worrying a little bit about potential pirates that will be coming in. Um, so after Baryonic Shielding here, I am going to get Efficient Shielding for um, our, our attack ships so that we can defend against pirates. Oh, hello. We found a Thumb Lumeris. We're pacifists, just like the Lumeris, so when we find them, we immediately will want to declare peace, which will be will have enough influence to do next turn. They'll probably be in for it. We finished our Xeno Industrials, so we're at 100 industry now. Yep, two turns to colonizing Spica. They're colonizing our snow planet there. Rare Earth Foams in one. Um, there's basically nothing to use our dust on right now. So we'll get to what I want to do with the dust in a second. Okay, Rare Earth Foams finished. So now we have access to the Mediterraneans as well, which will be our next thing there. We should have. I do hope they go well and profitably, friend. Alright, and now we have enough for peace. Oh, and there's a bonus to attitude with the first turn that you meet them, but then after you meet them, it goes down a little bit, and we can't offer them anything else until next turn. So we're gonna, we will, but we will offer them something next turn to sweeten the deal a little bit. You'd think that they'd want peace, though, because we're, like, blockading their stuff. Not that I mean to. It's not my intention to blockade your stuff. It just uh, seems to be happening. And we gained our last population, so we're full. Oh, not quite full here. We have one more that can fit. Right, so now we finish Baryonic Shielding, like, right away. We've got our public-private partnerships in two, but our science is going crazy pretty fast. We're up to 150 at turn 15. Oh, the Pulsos got here just in time. He gives plus five science on the anomaly, so he's much better off here, and you are much better off here where it's fertile. We're at 160 food per turn now, so that means we're at two, um, sorry, one growth every two turns. We also have access to level two curiosities, so there's going to be new strategics and stuff there. And we can't really build fast enough anymore. Um, I think that the I think that our priority should actually be our science is kicking ass right now. So it should be making the colony here to give us 20 extra um, 20 extra industry. And then what we're going to do is um, actually make a couple of more ships. So two more turns and we'll get a colony here, which will be excellent. That was not a very Welcome. useful thing Welcome. for him to do. Alright, so now they're into peace again. They like it a lot. 
Um, <laughs> we don't use this in our games, but the the Lumeris uh, horribly underrate their the value of their colonies, so you can buy colonies from them actually somewhat easily. Hey, you were into this a second ago. Yeah, see, told you. Not just a deal. Not bad. The reason we do this, of course, is because right thing rule um, gives you plus, when you're a democracy, gives you plus 10% fidzy whenever, for every empire you are at peace with. So we just jumped up even more here, gaining yeah, plus 162 <laughs> dust a turn. Um, and so what I want to do here is I'm going to take our vine ships pull these things off of them and have just uh, empty vine ships again and with the questioner here I'm going to do the same just pull everything off of it because I want to be able to start defending myself against these pirate fleets and so so after I finish on Spico 1, I want to just create three more questioners and I'll kit them up with a little bit of probes but also some guns and stuff so that they can fight the uh, the pirate fleets. And it'll just take a couple of extra turns to do that. And then I want two more vine ships afterwards. So the efficient shielding that we're getting in three, it'll help later but isn't super important right now. Okay. I think we have, what, one more turn for this? Two more turns. And now this is calms down here, so we want to get them on board. Okay, so we're going to get them for another 40 some which will get them up to 100. These guys should be slowing down soon in four turns um, and they'll go up to 50 next turn which is excellent. Okay. So yeah, why don't you just throw a probe towards the center of the universe and then you'll start making your way back after that. Meanwhile, we finish our thing here. And gain their goodwill. We get some extra resources. We don't have four star systems first. We've got the two anomalies in our empire because we got our second planet there, which means we got a random technology and we got a damn good one holy crap wave function control and colonizing ice wow that's a lot of free science 1200 my goodness and so now we have to choose light or fire um, so we can either get special kinetic weapons or this thing renewal system that gives us seven influence per command point um, I think that this is completely worthless, and this is moderately good. Uh, kinetics with a critical hit chance is kind of cool. Um, but I don't want to... Like, this spawns random pirates around my empire, and this is something that I accidentally will do in three turns, right? Like, this one is so easy to get. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this one, because it's quite easy and I want to just keep on moving the quest forwards um, as opposed to work, worrying about fighting anybody. How are you these days? Care for a they propose business? a trade agreement. I'm totally fine with this. It shows me their home sieve, or I guess I discovered it with the probe. Oh. This used to be the Lumeris' friends, but I can just overwhelm them now because I have so much influence. They're giving me 30 dust, ton of manpower. Yeah, we could also be thinking about using our manpower better, 
Like, we could definitely be invading some of these guys. Uh, we haven't had too much time to build ships for it, though. And then we've also entwined this place. So the interesting thing that we can do now is you guys know that the forest is the best thing for us, right? Oh, I left a signal there. Um, but the forest is actually also super, super, super easy to colonize. So one of the things that I like to do with Unfallen is that because you get a free pick, like it costs no industry or food or whatever to pick um, among these three planets. So I usually go with the one that's actually the hardest to colonize from an industry perspective and then colonize the easy ones. So like what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the Mediterranean and then immediately colonize the forest in one turn. And then this guy, he's going to head together with his buddy up there. Okay, and we've got four <laughs> empty questioner ships finishing next turn. Not too bad. This guy, oh, I guess he can just like fly over here and go exploring. It's turn 17. We're becoming pretty powerful. We get our upgraded fleets next turn. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and move to opening up the marketplaces and uh, opening up rushing things with dust. So I think the rushing things with dust is actually most valuable to us right now. And then we'll go grab the marketplaces as well. Again, we're just not focusing military in this particular game because I don't think we need it. I'm not gearing up to take the Lumeris out. Okay, so we finished efficient shielding. We got above 75. They're happy with trade, so as soon as we're above 75, oh, in order to yeah, in order to actually call the assist, we have to connect them to our Vine network, which is what these two ships are for. We're actually gonna flip this around, um, get the Vine ship sooner, because the public-private, like we don't need that much more science. We're just not very science-gated right now. We're already at 270 on turn 18, which is crazy. So then we're gonna go check out our questioners. We can make these however we want, but like I said before, we want them to be a little bit capable of doing stuff to the pirates, which means adding missiles, which are, so, which are the strongest and most flexible early game weapon. Like we could do lasers as well. It gives us slightly more flexibility mm, with 19. Yeah, I think we'll do lasers. And then a couple of defensive abilities and some probes. Now that's going to cost 168 each. And I say, that's totally fine, because I have so much dust that building these ships fast and then spending 600 to do this is a very low cost. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and explore those two things, adamantine, and we'll definitely take the chance to discover. And we got Stim City. Nice, which is good for extra happiness, although it's rare that we have happiness problems. We'll also just go ahead and uh, defend here because we're about to get some pirates in our business. And then we're gonna just go ahead and kind of explore out uh, in some different directions to see if there's anything else cool out there. I don't think there will be. And then we move our guys forward, start entangling a new network. Cool, cool. We gained another population. It was a Pulsus. So we have, oh. so we want our Pulsos to definitely remain on Savannah and Snow. 
because they get that extra science from anomalies and we want our unfallen to stick around on our fertile planets. The micro factories here give even more food. Um, so the mineral rich ones that give extra industry is probably the best here. 3358 versus 8562. Um, so yes, I'm happiest with these guys over here. And of course we're ecstatic. Um, we can even check if we remain ecstatic after removing toys for boys. I wouldn't be surprised yet. Now that we have the guardians, we're going to stay ecstatic even without it. Um, and that allows us to do something like this, where we can get my precious past. It takes a little bit of dust, but we have so much dust. Or sorry, influence, but we have so much influence. <clears throat> and this pumps us up from getting three blue caps a turn to five here, and we'll get be getting blue caps here as well. All right, and these guys have seven move speed. Pretty impressive. Okay, looking good so far. Um, yeah, I can't move them anymore this turn. So we'll shoot out one more random probe in that direction and end the turn, I believe. Yeah, these guys are all still going at max speed. Yep, so we're going to end turn there. Oh, we've got two pirates making their way up to my home planet. Well, I guess that they will have to meet me here then. We're going to go ahead then also and make a needle. So. Needles are our basic attack ships. They're, they look a lot like our scout ships, uh, except they have two attacking modules. And we're just going to make an empty one. Like before, you see it only costs us 75 industry to make it. And we're going to make another little empty fleet of these things. Again, we don't need the dust so much, or the science so much, even though it will provide a nice boost. Um, just because we're not gated by not being able to do things with our science. I want to control the systems right now and make a safe route for our vine ships. That's much more important for our successful expansion at this juncture. Okay, he's moving little by little. You're vining four more turns. All looks great. Where we can get Galactic Commodities Exchange in one turn. After finishing this, we got our population boost for the Unfallen. And now these Prowlers, which have balanced and laser defense, unfortunately, as we decided to go lasers. Um, but we can go ahead and do Power to Shields to help some of this. And luckily, we made ourselves with a little bit of laser defense as well, so no big deal. We'll do power to shields and fight them. Oh, that didn't go so well. Yeah, we didn't spend our influence for a few turns as planned. We got to our renewal system, which we'll never use. Then we have, this one is our next quest. Number of unfallen population or raise three systems to level two. So with this one, we get plus 10 influence per population, or science per population type, and this one gives plus five happiness per population type as a system improvement. Frankly, I don't really like either of these because it's not on your empire, it's only on that system. And, oh hey, found the, uh, the academy there. That's kind of neat. Uh, oh, the other guys showed up here, didn't they? Hmm. Yeah, we should have definitely uh, swapped out this guy. Oh, there's a battle in progress, so we can't do it. 
because we may end up losing more of our little questioners. At least not the fine ships. Yeah, these scout ships don't uh, perform excellently against the more advanced pirates, and these are these prowlers are definitely slightly tougher. Oh, wait, the ones that I fought, the first ones, these were tougher prowlers. Yeah, 74 and 167. The ones I'm about to fight have no defenses. They're much softer and no manpower in them. So I'm actually much more likely to be okay in this next fight, next fight here. <laughs> Although they still beat my pants just because I have no uh, yeah. Oof. I'll give that up for now. Because I have no um, real offense, right? Just having one slot there just is not good enough. So what we'll do here is we'll flip this around so that we make our needles first. And we'll do something better. All right, we'll send this guy down here. He's gonna find Libra, cool beans. This guy slowed down a little. So we're gonna do two here to get him to the max level. This guy will slow down in two turns. Um, we'll get him to 50 next turn. So we're just gonna keep trucking with this. If we look at our science, this, well, we'll look at it next turn after we get the uh, the pirates off of us. Oh, and we have to choose a thing here. So I'm going to do the level two system in three spaceports because um, I think it's it's just easier for me than gaining ten new non-unfallen population. Our unfallen population grows so fast that it takes a lot of management to get the non-unfallen there, unless you're conquering a lot of minor sieves. So this one's quite reliable, and that's what I'm going to use. We're gaining a lot of unfallen population. Although we're getting some pulses pops as well. Hooray. Alright, for our political party, staying as pacifists is fine from my perspective. Having scientists move into second place and ecologists in third seems fine. So I'm just going to let that happen. Oh, industrialists instead of ecologists made it to third place. That's equally fine by me. More pirates down here. Okay, those guys left. Not really interested in me anymore, I suppose. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. So I'm gonna create a fleet of these guys. These Needle Threes are worthless right now, so we have to upgrade them. We're gonna upgrade them with our an engine, and then we're gonna give them a couple of missiles. Um, and then one of each defense. So they'll have a little bit more oomph. And now I can yeah, put together a fleet with 100 power or so. Uh, and then we're gonna ride ride down with the vine ship, so yeah, we'll take the questioner as well. So this questioner here, merge him in. We'll get down this way, and then this vine ship. Of course, he was also an empty vessel, so we give him these two things. It's 216 to upgrade him. So, no problem, we upgrade him, and he'll also make it here in two turns. Cool, cool. So, now we have a, a we want to finish our vine ship next turn, so we'll have a second one following right after. And we'll get our needles and upgrade those. Over here, we've got this place, two more turns to being bind in. And uh, Ingress is turning, going to turn into a very nice little place where we just need to grow. Oh, we should have 
we weren't, weren't paying attention for a couple turns. Should have moved this guy here where he's fertile so that it grows faster. They're getting their second unfallen next turn. And then as soon as we finish our Xeno Industrials and our Public Privates, they're going to be getting even more. And this is going to go very quickly. I think you will see. Okay, and now I imagine you're down here. We're just going to keep on moving. Okay. So now, yep. Do, do, do. These guys are probably going to move to the side there just to see what's next as we chain together stuff after we settle Bonnie. We finished our commodities exchange, so the next thing that we want to start here, as long as we're going this very pacifist route, is we can get up to barons and toxics, which isn't too bad. But before I do that, I actually like to go for trading companies. Unfallen can start building trading companies so early because they're so strong in their science. You see, it's turn 22. <laughs> We're getting You're such a crazy amount. Oh, we're level 5 here, so we can boost ourselves up a little bit. I'm actually going to start giving him the extra movement speed, because each hero will get 5 abilities in each tier. And so these 3 are the good governing ones, but then I'd never want to let him leave this tier without getting these 2 abilities, and extra food and extra um, food and industry just isn't really worth it. I would rather get those two points in now, make him a useful general, and then worry about other stuff later. So these guys can both be upgraded. Send him down here as well. We want to take our four ship and move him first. And go ahead and do this. Then we'll explore a couple of curiosities there. So we found some antimatter, some of that, and a little bit of extra vision range. All sounds fine. And then we're going to go ahead and probe in a couple of random directions. Barricade there, and move our vine ship in, who's going to start the process of entwining. Oh, of course, this was, this was dumb. I, if I was a little bit smarter, and I ordered that in the correct way, so let's back up for a second. I moved these two ships down here before moving these guys. If I had moved these guys down, I, I should have done it such that I brought the fleet down here, who would make sure everything was safe, then the vine shift, then start the vining, and then move those ships down, and they would have moved at double speed, which would have gotten them all the way to Ash in one turn, and I could have saved one turn in um, entwining the Harishim system ash. So that's a mistake on my part. Still need to learn to be better all the time. So we'll get this place next turn. Four turns here and there's tons of pirates flying around. We'll deal with those guys later. In the meantime, they're quite friendly with us. We're at 75 so they're giving us tons of things. We've just slowed down here so we're gonna do two more with these guys, maybe even three more. How are we looking? Oh, we have so much influence. We're gonna do three more. Three more gets us another 54. You saw, as I told you, it doesn't do 10. It just does nine times whatever you were getting. So we ended up with 54. Um, so that'll get us to 100, which means that we'll be able to assimilate them in a bit, which we will do. Okay. I did upgrade these guys, right? Yes. All right, so next turn is a good one for us. We are we come in. Oh, we found Rift One. Okay, so now these Prowlers, we can do the same one, increase our shield absorption, but now with actual guys. Yeah. 
We might lose our questioner. Yeah, I was worried about that, but not the end of the world. Okay. So here, his job is really just to explore. Um, and the Riftborn, another pacifist group. So let's go ahead and uh, propose a bit of peace, perhaps. All I want is peace. We still don't trust you, but Which means more FIDS bonuses for us. Alright, so we've got this new needle ship here. So we've got our little fleet going on. And now these two vine ships, they can merge. And it'll still take five turns, right? If we had done it slightly better, they could be looking better. But so be it. And then we'll move these guys down this way. And I'm going to take my questioner, pull everything off of it again, because I want to make a couple more scout ships. And I want to make a couple more needle ships. And I want to make one defense ship to protect the questioners from uh, from dying so much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to finish the public privates and make one new fleet. It's going to have two needles, one more questioner, and one well. I want to finish the questioner first. We can finish a lot of stuff next turn, it looks like. <laughs> We're filling up here. Amazing. If they got... Oh, okay, and so we've got these guys connected now. All right, you're going to go down that way. You, sirs, are going to go off into the wild blue. We found a neutron star. That's kind of cool. And is that, yeah, another nebular cloud? So here we can only pick one thing. This dust nebula and ancient ruins around this desert makes it very dusty indeed. Um, we're going to get Bonnie right away, which is a Mediterranean with a dense atmosphere for extra food. So unfortunately no guardians here, sad face, but I have a feeling we'll somehow be okay. Um, and so here, Xeno Industrials don't do us anything, so I might as well just start by making Yeah, I'm gonna start by making another questioner. Um and then we'll do sustainable farms. Okay. Yeah, and then flying over here and getting like these guys. Not this one yet, but this one for Bonnie would help as well. Okay, we're gonna leave you here for now. Just sleeping is fine. All right. So now we have access to that as well. I'm gonna throw our Hyperium stock over here. It's not gonna slow us down too much. We can get it in one turn. Now we have a place that's producing Hyperium here. So might as well take advantage of it. We don't need our dust for anything. We'll just keep producing these empty ship hulls. And now we're really going to be building a snowball. All right, and so now with influence, uh, we're producing a fair bit each turn. But we want to uh, start accumulating it. Because when we get these guys, we want to be able to assimilate them directly. So now we are do have a use for our crazy amount of influence. Okay, back to trading. We get our second guy. We can get an unfallen guardian, a you social guardian, or an unfallen overseer. I actually like the unfallen overseer quite a bit. We'll use our first guy more as a general. The overseer has a couple of nice abilities, so woohoo, extra food, but later on we get extra industry, extra value on resource deposits, um, happiness, which we don't need so much, and then this is a nice one, the food and industry bonus here. 
which he can use pretty effectively. It's better, I think, than the Guardian. So the Guardian here, you know, he gets a lot of fleet stuff later on. The, the most of his benefits, except for this really nice plus 40% industry one, are all about bonuses to fleet. Um, and so if we, if we want a general, the uh, Baramaxa, Baramaxa is a little bit better. And on top of that, um, scientists are on our Senate right now. So having a guy who is on our Senate has certain benefits. Because as we get to make laws and stuff, they'll be applied. So for the first, for the first thing, we're actually going to go ahead and give him this plus food. Oh, and then we have a battle at Esh as some new prowlers are created. So these guys are laser defenses and mixed attack. We'll just keep doing the same thing here. Throwing those guys down. Um, and yeah, and we actually need a bunch of food here. So the fact that we can get a bunch of extra food from our hero is quite nice actually, because it's giving us, I think, on, oops, oops, there we are, you. It's on system and on fertile, is that right? Yeah, so 20 extra food from from his first ability, because we have one fertile planet here. Still not too bad, though. We discovered a black hole with one of our probes. Neato. Ooh, uh, pretty nice place down here. I guess it looks nicer because now we can colonize ice planets. But right here, that's also an ice planet. Yeah, the steps as well. But there's really not that much for us to do. Oh, and look at this. Deal has a savanna and a big old ice planet. And we're just going to take everything that we can get. Right? We just extend ourselves out as far as we can and take everything that we can. So here, we've got our questioner and our needle. Um, let's make sure we're making all the ships that we want to be making. I think that's fine there. Here... Yeah, I think it's also okay. Yeah, definitely want another questioner. Okay. And then, because that questioner already has four move speed, eh, we're still going to give him same same stuff as the other guys. So back to this design. The well is going to have... Uh, we don't have very much Hyperium yet, so we're going to wait on the fleet engines. And just do pretty much the same thing as our other ship there. We'll upgrade them to Hyperium engines later, those little boosters. And our needle is making missiles. And he'll have an engine as well. Okay. So, these guys will upgrade, obviously, and then I'm going to send them here. Well, actually, I'm just going to send them here. And they're going to find and merge up with this guy, who will accompany them here, so that they can start dealing with all this jazz. Okay, turn 24. I probably have a fair amount of... You're welcome, Earthborn. Thank you for hailing me. We're filling up here quite a bit. As far as other stuff we can do, this optics research lab seems like a pretty good idea. And we'll also jump in and grab a little bit of extra from Cerebral Reality, but that plus 25% is going to be another more than 50 science. We'll bring these guys out in the open. And actually, we can do one better, can't we? 
A little bit of wasted dust here, but no big deal. I can do that with the well, and now he moves slightly faster. Got our guys over here at deal. So second flaming embers. Who's our second flaming embers? Is that first flaming embers? First incandescent whatever's transient embers. Flaming embers, that's you. Okay. So just wanted to know what we're getting into here. Um I think we can take this study if we want. Yeah, we can either gain some rocks or study the effect and get later benefits. Let's go ahead and study it. And then we'll pull in two of these remaining curiosities here. No, oh, we got a free ship. I hate these ships actually, but whatever. It'll be okay. All right, we got a new Pulsos and Spica. Yeah, so they're moving them all here for now. I think that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> We're getting so many people. You begin entwining. You create and immediately upgrade. And then can go like this. More antimatter. Cool. Notice how it does not feel like this is turn 25. If you want, if you're playing any of the other races, the things that are going on right now feel much more like turn 40. Maybe turn 35. But like, we've effortlessly created a huge fleet while sacrificing almost nothing. Going at maximum speed, we have t 21 population already. Um, and as soon as we get to any of these guys, we'll be able to assimilate all of them. Huge amounts of manpower and dust and influence that don't impede us from anything, as well as getting commercial freight works. So we'll be starting our trade he trading headquarters um, before turn 30. It's all not too bad, is what I'm saying. Okay. Ooh, 15 industry on all colonies on our empire. Not bad. And we have another group of guys from Esh. They're pretty big here as we're entwining them. So we're going to keep defending ourselves. We'll probably lose our questioner, it looks like, though. Yeah, because he, he gets targeted first. Okay, here we're going to look at the savanna. Ooh, dust trees. Oh, and of course, I realized another mistake. We've had the ability to modernize ourselves for some time with our dust our blue cap mold and haven't done it yet that'll be another nice boost to our science which we should absolutely take advantage of there and there um, and we're almost to the point where we can do it in all three places and fulfill the quest so sorry about that for not doing it right away guys I absolutely should have done it right away Okay, two more turns. And now, with commercial frameworks finished, I think we go and unlock an extra law slot here by going for adaptive bureaucracies. Now do we want to give extra happiness? We don't need that at all. We're going to give the extra 
experience on our hero. Oops, not the needle. We're going to go for the trade company, which we can finish in five turns. Um, I think that's, we're producing so much science right now, we're at 670 science, so producing the trade company is going to do much more for me than anything else at this stage. Um, we should also get some planetary specializations, and we're filling up again, as you can see here. We also should be, oh, very nice, hello Nearest. Oh, all right, we're, we're gonna wait one turn for those nearest chums because I wanna see how much we'll need to uh, to assimilate these guys. I think it'll be 300 or 400, but I don't know offhand. It's a multiple of 100 based on the number of colonies that you have. So we'll figure that out next turn. All right, and let's just keep uh, I keep checking out these signals. Grim recycling. Alright, now here we've basically got take that questioner out. We've got a nice little fleet here. And that little fleet can go play with these guys, you can go with these guys, and you can come, oh, do we have another, we do, coral reefs and more influence, not bad, okay, yeah, these guys will be protecting us from pirates over here. These guys will be going for our assimilation route. And then with so much dust, the other thing that I should probably do, especially probably here now that I have it, is um, we're going to pull apart our vine ships again to get minimum required... Uh, industry and after we finish these two things to buff up our science a little bit more <laughs> which by the way we're gaining 195 food a turn now <laughs> um, but we're gonna make three new vine ships so that will have a group of five vine ships so that we can entangle things in two turns instead of five turns and we're gonna leave him there for just one turn And we're approaching the end of this demonstration. So, finished our adaptive bureaucracies. We now have access to a uh, level beyond. Oh. Okay, we got some Calgaros. Pilgrims that we found down here. Oh, this is where you got ambushed. Sorry, buddy. All right, well, you try to retreat again, I guess. Huzzah. Okay. So, this turn, we should have finished our entwining. Now they are entwined, and it is 300 to assimilate them, but we will of course see how easy this is. Uh, militarist support, unlikely, so let's just take them. And now they belong to the Unfallen. They've got their Savannah, Ash Desert, and with two people here, we have to evaluate whether we think Bonnie, I think Bonnie is going to be our better candidate for um, making our level 2 modernization. I think they're going to grow faster. Cool. And now our little needle fleet here, they're going to run through this way. And same with the vine ships. 
we're just going to send them straight through that way. Esh will, let's see, they're on a savanna now, so they'll create a xeno-industrial. And these Harshims do better on sterile planets, so we'll get them to expand there, not too far from now. On the research side, now that we have our trade companies here, I think that the clear thing that we can do to help ourselves out is still on this front. Um, there's the small benefit of increasing our military abilities. I think mostly I want to get this thing here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just do that. We'll get ubiquitous surveillance and then uh, I want our upgraded needles as well to get us going there. Actually, you know what? Upgraded needles aren't as important to me as colonizing our toxic on the home system. That'll be kind of nice. Alright, so then we'll move some of these guys through. Neither of these guys have any probes. No probes. So they can use those later. Actually, one of them can use them later. You should go out exploring, because we should know what's around us. Oh, there's something around us. Good. Now, you... I mean, he doesn't have to blockade, he can just hang out. They're at 100 influence with us, so... It's easy. Declaring war on them doesn't do anything because we can't take them over unless they're entwined anyway. So, yeah. Here, we want him to wait another turn. Um, he's not getting anything here. Three turns will be done with our trade center. Okay. And okay. Let's go run through these things really quick. Yep, we have an extra law, that's right. By the way, this is plus 60 with my precious activated. So here, it's actually difficult to say. I don't think I want, I need star build boogie, although it makes unfallen so fast in their internal systems, and I don't need a new colony. Uh, and I'm already, pretty sure. I'm already devoted. Yes, indeed. So there's, and like I'm at max manpower, so none of these laws actually do anything for me. So I actually want to just leave this extra law slot um, unused. All right, you're going up here. So why don't you go ahead and bump up your, mm, we'll do the industry one. He's going to have a lot of people on his system. Esh is now part of our world. Hooray. Two more turns. So on turn 30, we will have that one done as well. We should finish our quest now. We've got ubiquitous surveillance. We're going for the hyper packs. We're the first to have it eight planets in our empire. We've got our three spaceports. Now we get to choose produce tons of, of science or maintain um, 70 happiness. So this maintaining 70 happiness is super easy. It takes 16 turns. The benefit is uh, this meta antactogen, which is a pretty good thing. You don't necessarily sell it right away, but usually you do. Um, so how hard for us is a thousand science? We're already at 815, so a thousand feels like we can get that way before turn 45, which would be 16 turns, right? And so if we just want to be moving through the quest tree as quickly as possible, I think we take the science one. All right, then we're going to move our chums forward here. Our hyper packs there will also have autonomous construction built in. 
I think we can do it this way, it's fine. Because these guys are getting quite full. Yeah, they're going to be full in two turns. So having hyper packs ready to go colonize this toxic after the trade company is finished sounds good. This first subsidiary will just be on ingress because that'll be easiest. Uh, it'll have enough influence to do it. And this is, okay, this is a little dead end triangle over here. Totally fine from my perspective as we can just colonize all of these spots. Get some deciduous trees. Yeah, it's spanning two arms of this pinwheel galaxy. No problem at all. And now, next turn, we'll have to uh, start blockading that so that we can protect our vine ships in case anything happens. Okay, deserted cities. Vine ships have one more turn. It's turn 29 right now. So I think that you guys kind of get how we do this. I have that sense. Okay. And then we should have, yeah, you, my friend. probe over here. It looks like we're going to be able to find the Riftborn headquarters. And you, we can spend a little bit on probably one more to get up to 50 happiness with and get even more dust, even more science. No problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter our last turn of this guide. We're just starting to get our first new vine ships. Hooray, hooray. We're at 20 unfallen, so we get plus 15% influence. So we're up even higher. And as I suspected, um, pirates are going to start spawning here. We have our ships ready to catch them, basically. Uh, the prowlers are, yeah, again, their energy weapons. So. Yep, so now we're going to blockade. We're going to move the ships. We're going to be again entangling with these vine ships. And now that that entangling has begun, we can take our new vine ship, which will be upgraded. One, two, applied sign, upgrade, and move. And it moves super fast, so it gets there this turn. go. One, two, merge. And now it's still four turns because it's always, the amount of turns it takes is always rounded down. I guess up in the number of turns, but down in terms of favorability to you. So instead of, you know, you have three vine ships and it takes 10 turns for one vine ship to do it, instead of taking 3.3 .3 turns, it's saying, okay, well, it's going to take four turns, right? This makes sense. Um, okay. So this is all excellent. We've got our first thing finished here. So now we'll go ahead and yeah, just make little things. Right, we can make our drone networks and cerebral reality to help them out a little bit. They don't need too much else. And these guys have also finished entwining here. So we have to decide, OK, do we want the barren gas snow with dust trees? Or do we want the Mediterranean steps? The Mediterranean steps is definitely the way I would go. So let's move on over here. Our questioner, we can. This is a questioner six, right? Yep. So we'll. What I would do here is say, all right, let's do one of these. Throw off one of these to reduce the maintenance costs and make this a true prober for questioner seven. And get him up here with his four extra probes. Let's 
Let's see what's going on. So we found some ionic crystals and some more Hyperium. We'll find a free technology later. And Dark Lair. Not too shabby. You, Mr. Crappy Warrior, you can just, I don't know, come over here, I guess. Alright, so as I said, we got our population bonus for Unfallen already. Yep, we found both Ionic Crystals and Dark Litter, but the Ionic Crystals we can't exploit. We're at 100 with two factions, assimilated one already. Um, we've got four systems finished, or sorry, five systems finished vining. Um, in, in one nebula, we'll have another one in four turns, maybe three turns. We'll see. And yeah, we're gaining, we're gonna get these next two in ten turns, and we're gonna keep making our way down here in this intractable or inextricable march forward. So, kind of going through this, you'll notice that there's. Like if you look at this compared to some of the other videos that we were doing, and especially in the um, like the PvP match that that I've done in the past, you might say that this is incredibly sloppy play, right? There's a lot of things that you can ignore as unfallen or miss or not do optimally and not really get punished for because they're so goddamn strong. Like this second place that I got was a strong system, but I'm sitting at eight people on this place now, eight. It's so good, because um, you start with two, you just grow super, super, super fast, you colonize way faster than any other civilization can do, except for Riftborn with, um, with infinite strategic resources, um, but you do it automatically and at a speed completely unprecedented. and an industry cost that other races can't compete with, right? Like we spent a few hundred industry on all of these colonizations and then just time, no food, etc. So we're sitting here, it's turn 30. We're at plus 460 dust a turn, most of which are, is actually coming from our own systems, right? It's not even coming from the minor sieves, although the minor sieves are giving a nice 132. We're at plus 67 influence a turn, which is actually plus 100 because we've had a law going on for this whole time. We're one turn away from our trade company headquarters. Um, and if we look at our influence here, we're getting a bunch from our guardians, from the nebular clouds that we entwined, but also from the fact that we have peace with two guys and we're ecstatic. So, Beyond that, um, if we just go through our markers here, we're producing 800 science a turn, which will be going up rapidly as we colonize more planets and get more systems into our fold. Um, and score-wise, we are the point leader by a substantial margin. So we weren't at the beginning, but now we're actually above even the enemy cravers. Um, because they just can't hold a candle to us. So turn 30, we are the point leader by about 30, 36 points. Um, yeah, so a couple of closing comments then on the Unfallen before I exit out here um, is that number one, the Unfallen are, I think you can probably appreciate, the strongest of all of the factions that we play right now. And, and um, they have very different mechanics, but all of the different mechanics are better than basically every one of the other factions. They produce more influence than the Empire. They produce more food than Hor Horatio. They um, colonize systems and impress the minor factions basically better than the Lumeris can, at least in the early game because of their influence uh, bonuses. They're gated by a couple of things. Um, they can't assimilate the minor sieves until they entwine them, 
and their vine ships, in theory, are points of weakness. So if you're playing against the Unfallen, try to attack their vine ships, and especially attack them early, when they're still getting their foothold. Um, one other thing to note that we didn't talk about is that if you see in the defense down there, the 240 um, infantrymen, the amount of manpower on Unfallen systems is also much higher than in any other race, so they're much harder to attack. They have much more defensive abilities than Lumeris or Horatio or Sophons or any other race that wants to de be defensive in the early game. They can be very defensive without too many problems. Their ships, as we talked about, um, there's actually nothing so impressive about... Well, let me just run through them really quick. So their thorn class, which is their needle, right? There's nothing so impressive about this. Two offense, two defense, and one support slot. Two support, one offense, two defense slots. This is like pretty standard out of the box, nothing special going on here. Um, same with their scout ship. Two support, two defense, one attack. Yeah, like not at all powerful, not like Empire that has two attack, or Cravers who both have two attack on their scout ships and can do a lot more with them. Um, the Vine class ships are pretty boring, but I think the key thing from the Unfallen perspective is because you make so much dust, you have to keep doing this dance of making, like your, in your industry is precious and your dust is an excess basically. So don't waste industry by building ships with modules already on them. Spend your industry to make empty hulls and then upgrade those empty hulls to uh, whatever ship you want, up to, you want them to be. Um, yeah, so in our PvP games we allow Unfallen right now, but it's basically like a known handicap. So I would say play Unfallen or have a friend play Unfallen if you want to give them a little bit of a boost in the game, make it a little bit easier for them, make their mistakes less punishing, and in so doing you can take a game that might otherwise be unbalanced if you have a more experienced and a less experienced player, and really even the, even the stakes a little bit, because Unfallen are definitely that good. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to close down this guide. I'm going to save the game right here um, and put it in the Google Drive link uh, into the description as I've done with all of the other uh, expert turn 30 guides that I've done so that if you guys want to pick up right here and feel what turn 30 optimized unfallen feel like to play, you'll be able to pick up right here and uh, go from where I left off and go play around with our Lumeris and Riftborn um, friends down to the south. Thanks as always for watching and um, please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Check out our other expert guides for more Endless Space 2 content and uh, if you want to talk more about any of this or have questions, feel free to leave a comment or join us in the Endless Space subreddit, which is our Endless Space, um, where both my brother and I are pretty active at answering questions and uh, talking to folks there. So thanks everybody, and I will see you in the next video.